the world back again. It is the Country Rap Report. It's your boy, Vic Excel. And your dude, Spank. Your dude, Spank. I'm going to get you a shirt to say your dude, Spank. And um, your hey, dude, man, Spank. we back with another Country Rap Report. Before we even get into it, y'all do me a favor. Please subscribe to the channel. Please leave comments. Hit that like button. Hit that notification button. Let us know if it's anything you want us to talk about. Let us know if it's if you need us to shut the hell up. Just let us know. Hit that comments area. Hit that comments area. Hit that like button. Let's run them numbers up and get that algorithm going. All right. So today, my guy, I feel like we're trendsetters when it comes to the country rap genre. We're trendsetters. We are the first people I've seen drop a, a blog, a blog on top 10 country rappers going into 2021. So I deemed, I deemed this episode, I, I feel like it's not fair to talk about the fellas if we don't talk about the ladies. Okay. So today we will be talking about the ladies of country rap music. Okay. This list will not be in any order. So I'm saying that to not offend, but the order will kind of be those who have, I'm going to start with the people who have the smallest amount of exposure and then we'll move up. But this is not a ranking of one through 10. We're just going to talk about uh, some ladies who are definitely doing their thing on the country rap forefront. Okay. Okay. Now, if anybody I missed that you feel like we should mention, please, 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 let me know. Okay. All right. Now, I got to pull out my phone for this because some, and you know what? One time for all the ladies of country rap, all the ladies I reached out to, um, they were all very responsive and um, very talkative. And um, I really, really appreciate that, man. Um, the genre of country rap, like, I'm, 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 I'm sorry. I'm sorry, hip hop. I'm sorry, hip hop. But the genre, they are a lot nicer. They click like. They respond. They appreciate the coverage. So one time for everybody who's doing their thing on the country rap side who right now understand politicking. Because a lot of you guys in hip-hop don't understand. So I got to say that all the late, bro, I reached out to all these ladies and 80% and of these ladies reached back out to me. And I just had one simple question or two simple questions for them. And they all reached back out. And that made me feel good. That's why I took this piece so long because I've been having dialogue with these females. That's dope. Okay. So and, 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 and to your point, you don't get a lot of that in hip hop. Yeah. I don't know if these people will stay that way. Hopefully they won't. Hopefully they will stay this way, the way that they are. But usually when ego kicks in, all of this being nice and hospitable and trying to do PR and stuff that artists are supposed to do goes out the window. So hopefully we'll stay on that path. Now, I also think because there's not a lot of outlets, so the attention is necessary. I, I think now once outlets grow, I'm, I'm seeing a lot of shows, one time for everybody doing shows, um, one time for everybody doing any form of journalism on the country rap side of things. But I think once the outlets, Absolutely. Once the outlets grow, I think artists will start picking favorites because we already have some, some blogs that are definitely – catered towards certain individuals. Yeah, they nut ride. That's, you, you can be as PC as you want to be, but they, they definitely swing it. Uh, we're not about that. We're coming at from a purely journalistic and music business expertise point of view. Ain't no nut riding here, but it's, it's all definitely real feedback on our 30 plus years each being in the music industry experience. Yeah, and to me, if you're grinding, we're gonna somehow cover you. If you got if you got something we need to talk about, we're gonna talk about it. True. All right, so today let's talk about the ladies of country rap. All right, first of all, I got a couple honorable mentions. Um, because to me, and you know, I say this in probably one of our first blogs, rap is rap. Rap is rap, and if you rap on one song and sing on seven, I, I can't put you in the genre. If you got 10 songs, you rap on five, sing on five, I give you a pass. But if you have one, <laughs> if you have one song where you rapped on, I can't call you a country rapper. I'm sorry. So with that being said, a couple of names were threw at me that I want to name them. Honorable mention, but I don't consider them a female of country rap. And in a year, 
we have to do a part two to this and I have to add them because they rap more in 2021, then I will. All right, so I want to start Well, off. hold on. Well, before you do that, I'm surprised you even found some honorable mentions because I, it was, I was struggling to get 10 of these motherfuckers because I, I knew of five. But then after the five, I was like, okay, well, this person was here before Savannah and so was this one and I knew of that one already. But then Katie and whoever else, but it was, it was a struggle for me. It really wasn't until you sent me your list and I was like, oh, okay, let me go research her. Because I did not know of some of these other people. They, they, you're, so your honorable mentions are still going to be some people that I didn't know about that I'm going to have to go and research when we get done recording this. All right, now, I got to say this, and I can't remember her name. Maybe when I say her name, you'll remember. Um, it was a female that you follow on IG, that you follow, that mm -hmm. um, her name came across, and I was going to make her honorable mention because I couldn't find any of your music when I looked on her um, feed. What she looked like? Uh, she, she was white. Okay. No, right. I'm saying what she got tattoos, blonde hair. What? what I can't remember. Do? I think it's someone you met down in the Florida area. Um, she might be married to someone affiliated with Mako. I'm not sure. Um, I can't remember her name. It's okay though. If I remember her name during the, um during this during this blog, we'll okay. Shout her out. All I'm right. having an old person's moment right now, so I definitely don't know who you're talking about. But hopefully it'll come to. Me. Okay, so. <clears throat> Honorable mention number one. This lady's been in the game a while. I gotta say one time for Miss Carly Rogers. Um, she actually went back and redid the um song that Church done with Katie Noel when they re-recorded it. She's the female vocalist who re-recorded that record. Uh, she actually has a record where she's rapping with uh Leroy Biggs and Church called 1040. Um, so honorable mention to her. Someone told me to put her on the list, but when I looked up her music, um, I didn't find but that one record where she actually had bars on. So I can't call her okay. a country rapper. But one time for Carly right. Rogers, because right. she's definitely doing her thing, and um, she got some big numbers. Also, got to say one time for Miss Amber De La Cruz. Uh, she's an honorable mention. I researched her music, and I couldn't find bars anywhere, but she did have some music with Hard Target and some music with um, some other country rappers. But I never seen a song where she had any bars, but she definitely has a strong affiliation to country rap music and the genre. So honorable mention to her for even getting mentioned. And last but not least okay. on my honorable mention list, I gotta say one time for Drop Top Blonde. Uh, Drop Top Blonde actually has music with, um, she has music with Hard Target, not Amber De La Cruz. Drop Top Blonde has music with um, Hard Target and some other country rap artists. Uh, she actually has a song where she's rapping the whole song, but when I look up her Spotify music and the music that she's releasing to the world um, for commercial reasons, I didn't find anything that was country rap related, so I put her in the honorable mention category. Okay. All right, so now, the way we're going to talk about these people, um, I'm, a, I'm a basically, we're going to let them know where they're from, uh, let them, you know, about the, the current singles and our opinions on them if we have one. Okay? Okay. All right, so let's start it off one time. Miss Lee Lee Styles. One time for Lee Lee Styles. Have you had a chance to check her out? No. I'm all, all, all ears on this one. All right, so Lee Lee Styles. I really like Lee Lee Styles. She has a very constant flow. Um, she's from Nashville, Tennessee, so she's right there in the heart of these things. She's right there where all the smoke is smoking. <laughs> um, right now, she has a record called I Wish that's definitely, definitely doing its thing. Um, when it comes to Spotify, she's right at um, like a, a stack when it comes to monthly listeners. And she has 15,000 Instagram followers, so she definitely has the potential to get there. Her Spotify numbers aren't really there right now, but she's definitely, definitely in position when it comes to the numbers on Instagram to take her over the top, in my opinion. And I, I really okay. like her flow. I think she's um she's going to be a, a force to be reckoned with as the genre grows and as we hear more about people on the come up and people start to pay more attention to the ladies. Okay. All right, next up, 
We got Miss Saudi B. Saudi V. All right. Saudi B. Um, she is from Georgia. Wait, the Lily took the place of Drop Top Blonde for you on your yeah. list? Yeah, Lily. Okay, okay. Lily Styles took the place of Drop Top Blonde. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. On my original list. All right, Saudi V. She's from Harlem, Georgia. Never heard of Harlem, Georgia, even though I'm right here in Georgia. I've never <laughs> heard of Harlem, Georgia. But she definitely, when I went and checked out her music, she, to me, is definitely in the lane of hip-hop. Um, yes. She, she just had a big show. Well, she didn't necessarily have a show this weekend. She attended a show where uh, she actually hit the stage. Her style to me is a little, um, her style to me is a little, I don't really have a word for it. Like she's not so choppy. To me, she seems like she has more hip hop background than maybe Lily Styles. She seems like to me, her initial development was or is from hip hop or she might definitely be a fan of hip hop more so than some of the other people. And she studied a little more and, and perfected her flow. When it comes to Instagram, because to me, looking at these people followers was also important to me. When it comes to Instagram, she's sitting at about 3K, which is not a lot. It's not a lot, but it's definitely enough to start to get some attention. She has a brand new record called Whiskey in My Glass, which I really, really like. And she's basically talking about what it takes for her to get through her problems and get through the day. So who would you compare her to, like, in in the hip-hop landscape? I kind of gave her, like, a gangsta boo type vibe-ish. Just from... I, I hate... I don't want to say that. Um, I don't like it. Lord, I'm probably to offend somebody. And this is probably going to get it out of the way. You know how we, how in rap we have these terms of white dudes trying to act black? And I felt like when I listened to her, some of her stuff and when I saw some of the pictures, I was like, okay, um, this is one of those people that's encompassed into the hip hop culture. And people will probably say that she's trying to act black. And I don't know her, never met her. Uh, just through my research and looking at pictures and listening to some of the music, she might get that um, stereotype just from that vibe. But her 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 rap vibe gives me the the gangsta boo, maybe me a X type. Um, I wasn't impressed, but I didn't hate it. Um, there were a couple that you sent me that I absolutely loathed, but I didn't I didn't hate her. I thought she probably could have been higher up on the list, but. Um, I haven't seen when she's been that that active either. I think the last thing that I saw from her was like that was re internationally released through the store was like 2019. All right, um, she has two releases that she did come out with. Um, actually, she had a release in 2020 called Undercover that was um. I didn't see that one. And I I definitely get what you're saying because if you look at the cover on Shotgun Rider, it might give you when you look at that imaging you might think hip-hop, not country rap. But if you check right. out, I think she went through a little rebranding and she okay. assembled a new team. And she's definitely now in the lane when it comes to imaging of country rap. Um, the funny thing is, I'm not going to be able to compare any of the country rappers to any of the females in hip-hop because I think the lane is completely different. So maybe sometimes the pattern of the flow might be there, but I, I don't... You know, it's, it's kind of hard for me to compare. I definitely agree when you think of urban hip-hop culture, when you look at the cover right. of um, Shotgun Rider, even though the concept can go on both. Having a shotgun rider, somebody that rides with you, I get it. Yeah, but I don't I don't get country rap when I look at this, though. So. Okay. I don't get them vibes. I, I definitely get, like, Snow Bunny vibes. You know, that's what I get when I look at that. All right, well, and I don't know if that was purposeful or I don't know if it was just, hey, this is the image that we're running with. We're going to go with it. That It is what it is. But she probably, I, she, I like the new stuff. I'm looking at the new images now. I like her new imagery now. Um, and she doesn't look like, see the thing about, and some of the other people that's on this list that are winning, 
they don't look like country rappers, but they also don't look like rappers. Like they don't look like they're trying to uh, what they call it uh, appropriate the the hip hop culture. They just look like regular females. Those are the ones that are winning. She looks now she looks the part of somebody that could definitely be a musician, and you couldn't tell that she was a rapper or a singer. Uh, and that I do like. So now I might need to go back and check it, check the new stuff and just start following her now just to see what her current stuff is going to sound like. Because the new imagery definitely is an improvement from what it was with uh, Shotgun Rider. Now, I think also with her team, because one time for manager Jason, he hit me up. I think she's, you know, a lot of times it's about the team and the people you put around you. And I think they got her in the right direction. Like I said, over the past yeah. and they definitely had her on stage um, at a big event in, in Kentucky. Um Again, okay. I, I was okay. just happy for the fact she's from Georgia, so hopefully um, we'll get a chance to get her on the show and chop it up with her, and y'all be on the lookout for her joint whiskey in my glass. Um, okay. Her initial release made me, it gave me, if I had to compare, her initial release gave me a Katie Noel vibe. Um, so, and I'm talking, really? I'm talking the singing Katie Noel, not the rapping Katie Noel. Um, okay, okay. Un yeah. Undercover definitely gave me the vibe of Katie Noel. That's no disrespect to anybody just put me in that lane. All right. Next up on the list, and like I said, this list is not an order, so I don't want anyone to feel offended or feel like, oh, I should have been higher. This is just us acknowledging and recognizing the females that came across my desk of country rap, and maybe this will be an opportunity for people to check out their music and check them out. All right, next on Absolutely, because you're giving me names that I didn't even know about. So it, not only am I going to research, but this, is, this video could help with some discovery for some people. And and from where I stand, fellas, this is journalism. Absolutely. We could have done this two weeks ago, but I wanted to get as many ducks in a row and get introduced to the music and the individual. All right, next on my list, and to me, the most wholesome one I've had contact with, um, she's a mother, she's a wife, she's a rapper, Miss Carolina Queen out of Union Grove, North Carolina. Um, Carolina Queen, her latest project is called Don't Touch My Guns. It's actually a remake of Breland's Don't Touch My Truck. Um, <laughs> I actually, look, it's kind of comical, but the fact that she actually went bar for bar with Breland talking about different type of weaponry, First of all, Carolina Queen, I'm scared of you. Don't nobody need to mess with her. Don't touch her guns. Um, that was her latest release, but she got quite, she has a whole project on Spotify. And um, like I say, she was very, very happy when I when I tapped in with her. Um, when it comes to, um, she's like at a stack when it comes to monthly listeners on Spotify. And right now, all these women, but the ones that we're going to name towards the top, their Spotify numbers are probably not where they should be, but they're all kind of new to the genre. So, you know, it is what it is. Um, like I say, man, I had a chance to speak with her, and I just want to say some of the things she said. Um, she feels like the females in the genre really need to work together and not really be trying to beef and argue over the title Queen of the South. She has a brand Amen. New, she has a brand new project, a brand new single on the way called Crowns. And in her single Crowns, that's what she's going to be addressing. All the cattiness and everybody trying to be Queen of the South and how everyone should work together. Um she was very when, when you <clears throat> when you talked to her, did she seem like she was um genuine? Like trying to do music genuinely? Because when I listened to the music, I just didn't I didn't hear where it was not so much taken serious, but it was more like like not authentic. It was just like a hobby. That's what I felt. All right, now, I'm going to be honest, because when you say mother, you say wife, um, right. you know, that, that's a full-time job in itself. Um, with the fact that she has a full-length project and a lot of these people don't, um, I think she takes it as serious as she can with everything else that's on her plate. That doesn't mean okay. that as the genre grow. Um, we won't hear more from her. Um, to me, when I listen to everyone else, I feel like if she got, and this is no disrespect to the people that are on her team, I feel like her music would come off more serious if she had better production. 
Uh, yeah, yeah. Now, yeah, I, her, I agree with that. I agree her, with that. Her flow, she didn't seem as comfortable with her flow as a lot of these other women. Um, but I can see where she has a lot of room to grow. And I think with her maturity level, um, she definitely can learn fast and probably teach a lot of these younger ladies how to kind of get in line and, 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 and do something. Even if she stopped doing music today, I see Carolina Queen uh, possibly starting a label and being able to direct talent in the right way. But I'm not sleeping on the music because I really like the Don't Touch My Guns and how she flipped that Breland. And everybody can't flip a record and make it entertaining. That's true. So shouts out to Carolina Queen mm -hmm. out there in Union Grove, North Carolina. Let me say this, the funny thing, every one of these artists, I did not know any of the towns that these people were from. Never heard of this shit. Never, never heard of these places. But it's all it's all to the good. All right, now, next person on my list. And this is a person that when I asked, because all the women that I spoke with, I sent them my existing list. Mm -hmm. I sent them my existing list. And I asked these ladies who they feel like should be on the list. And I'm not sure if I had this person on the initial list, but she was mentioned. So I got to let her know that these ladies out here on the independent scene are definitely throwing your name out there that you should be recognized. Um, one time for Miss Doris Ann. All right, Doris okay. Ann is from Verona, <clears throat> Kentucky. She's from Verona, Kentucky. And Doris Ann is definitely, definitely getting it in. All right, let me go over the numbers real quick. She's sitting about a K a month when it comes to Spotify, and she's about at a K followers on Instagram right now. I didn't check anybody's Facebook numbers, any iTunes. I just stuck with Spotify and Instagram. But Doris Ann, I'm not sure how long she's been in the game. I like her flow. Um, she's a little sassy. So to me, Doris Ann would be kind of the, the most attitude having when it comes to the ladies of country rap. Um, she actually has <laughs> this record called Target Practice. I want everybody to check out the disc record target practice and I'm going to let y'all decide who she's talking about in target practice. But she does have a disc record called target practice and she has a record out called bourbon on ice that I'm really, really digging. Now, Doris Ann to me embodies, embodies what you think. when you, If you say country rap, female poster child, I got to throw Doris Ann picture on there. Doris Ann would be the first female on the country rap stamp, if I had to make a country rap stamp. Really? Um, she just embodies the image of what you would foresee in country rap to me. I think she's got that on lock. <clears throat> um, I'm not upset with her music. Um, she has the attitude to be successful. And um, like I say, man, if y'all get a chance, check out her joint target practice and check out her joint bourbon on ice. You think she has better imagery than Katie? As a country girl from the sticks, big trucks, all of that? No, no, no. Okay, so no, 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 no. Um, okay, and this, I don't mean this in a negative way, so I don't <clears throat> want anyone to be offended. Oh, they're going to be offended anyway, so, you know, you ain't got to do the disclaimer. Okay, I don't think LBGT <clears throat> when I think country rap. Okay, that aside, <laughs> let's remove that out of the picture. I We're talking about her to look. We talk what? Okay, we, we're talking about what she looks like. She looks like a country girl. Okay, both of them do, but I think Katie's look is more what a country rapper would be stereotyped as, and stereotype is the better word, not so much boxed in. Okay, when we think look, we think image right. in, in what we see, right? Right. So you've seen pictures of Dor Doris Ann, right? Yeah. Same pictures of both, but I still okay, think well, Katie... I want, hold on, let me okay, ask you. Go ahead, go ahead. I want you to close your eyes. Go ahead. Okay. Think of the last picture you've seen of Doris Ann and the okay. last picture you've seen of Katie Noel. Chances are Doris Ann was in front of a Confederate flag in front of a big truck. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, you're right. You're right. You're right. Chances you're are right. Katie Noel is in front of a big truck with a lady in her arms. That's true. Or grinding on them on the sofa. Yes. Okay. With that being said, yes. That is agreed. And okay. when I think when I think music, and again, I love Katie Noel. So we're going to talk about her on this list. I love Katie Noel. 
But when I think country rap, and I'm talking female poster child for the image, I'm not even mm -hmm. saying best music. I'm saying <laughs> right now, if someone says, show me a picture of a female country rapper, I probably would get Doris Ann's picture. Okay, I'm mad at that. And when I think of that attitude, if you follow her, because I follow her on, on social media, she's outspoken like I would expect a country rapper to be. Matter of fact, I think Doris Ann has the potential when it comes to her attitude. I will put her in the vein of Adam Calhoun. She is the most outspoken of all these women on this list. Mm. Okay, keep going on the list. I think there's another name that's going to come up that's probably just as outspoken. Okay. Next up. Represent St. George, Georgia. She's she's new to the game, but she's definitely, definitely moving and shaking. Miss Jane Wick. Jane Wick. I really, really, first of all, I think she has the dopest name because I'm a big fan of John Wick. So one time for Miss Jane Wick, for everybody who want to check her out, it's spelled J-A-Y-N-E. W Y K Jane Wick is from St. from St. George, Georgia. Even though I'm from Georgia, I've never heard of St. George. Um, Spotify, just like the other ladies, by the a, a, a K monthly listeners, by the K Instagram followers. She has a brand new project called Ascension. Um, her first record that I heard, um, I heard her um, first joint off of that project, and it was definitely in the lane of hip hop. So I can tell her initial, her initial entry was in a hip hop lane. And she's kind of switched gears when I went and listened to the EP. So you hear more of the country rap in there for her first initial single didn't make me think country rap. But I like her flow. And when I hear her from releasing that first joint to the progress she's made right now, I'm definitely rocking with her. Um, to me, she has the potential. If she say, you know what, I'm not a country rapper. I'm just doing hip hop. She is the person that I can see um, being able to jam that lane. And she's only been in the game. Like she released her first single last year, 2020. Um, it was Beat the Block Down. And it definitely gave me hip hop feels. But like I say, in this new full, well, it's not a full leaf. It's an EP called Ascension. She got records on there like um, Roadrunner, Faithful. Um, those records to me put me in that country rap lane that, you know, qualify her for this category. I didn't listen to that one. So that's another one. That's a discovery for me. All right. So one time for Jane Wick. Um, she's also very nice, you know, that we're going to be talking about her to be covered. And y'all get a chance, man. Y'all definitely, definitely check her out. Uh, next on the list. And I was actually. Where we at now? We on five? I'm, we halfway through the list. We at five. Okay, cool. All next right. on the list. And I was actually shocked when I seen her numbers because her name, her name gets mentioned so much. I thought her numbers when it came to Instagram followers and um, Spotify plays would be higher. Next on the list is Miss, is Miss Stormy Lee who has the second best name in country rap female artist to me. I love <laughs> that. Now, when I think when I think country female rap, Stormy Lee is the perfect name. Let me find out that's her real name. She's from Shelby, <laughs> Alabama. So right there, the name and where she's from, I was locked in. Locked, okay. in. locked in. Stormy Lee. All right, now, when I went to Spotify, right now she's sitting about a K monthly listeners, listens, and she's at about 3K when it comes to Instagram. Did you get a chance to check out any Stormy Lee music? I did, especially the diss. But yeah, I, I, I kind of, I like her, I like her vibe. She was the one I was talking about that was pretty outspoken. She goes live um, and she's, she has a good personality. I, it, it, she has a likable personality, which is an asset in the music industry. She's not put off -ish. She's not timid. She just, she's got one of those, hey, let's go get drunk or let's go get high type of personality. An everyday girl. All right. Now, when I looked at her, um, her uh, profile on Instagram, and her Instagram is I am Stormy Lee, 
So he's got singer, rapper, top liner. Now I, I don't know what the hell a top liner is. Do you know what a top liner is? Did somebody mention that in another video? Um it was the the Shelby Kate, when she talking about some top liner or hit like some some shit, like I don't know. I don't know what it is. But yeah, somebody else mentioned it. This must be some country's thick shit. Now, Stormy Lee, uh, you know how we talk about the imaging? Stormy Lee definitely has the imaging of a country girl, but she's very, very pretty. She's slim. Uh, she's her fashion game appears to be on point. Like she definitely, mm -hmm. she definitely either has a team. Or she's definitely spends a lot of time in the mall. Stormy Lee is the first person I could see, other than Savannah, who will get that Fashion Nova um, hookup. Fashion Nova need to be okay. hot. Stormy Lee, uh, she is definitely some brands need to get with her. She's definitely going to be a good brand ambassador. I agree with you when it, when you talk about her going live. She definitely has that um, that personality that's going to make people like her. I'm not okay. sure, I'm not sure of her age. But when I look at her, she looks extremely young. So if I found out she was under 21, well, she's probably... I don't think she's that young. She, her and um, Sarah Ross been doing it since about 2015, 2014-ish. So she can't be that young. Like, at, at, at best, if she got started at 15, she may be 21, 22. That's at a good age, but I doubt it. Um, she, I think... I, I'm I'm gonna guess mid twenties, close to the thirty line. Well, that she, would be my guess. She looks really really young. I <clears throat> like her imaging, and you know, I, I her, she blends the singing and the rapping. Um, she does it very very well. Um, so I I at first I was like, well, should I keep her? But nah, she's definitely in that lane, and I see why she has singer and rapper. Um, like I said, I don't know what the top liner is, but I see why she put that because, <laughs> you know, she sings just as well as she raps. Okay. All right. Which is, not, everybody on this list can't say that. No, nah, you're right. Um, since you mentioned her name, next up was Miss Sarah Ross, who, um, and I think Sarah Ross, she's definitely on Average Joe. <laughs> um, a lot of people know Average Joe. They are the front runners when it comes to country rap. Uh, they're probably the the um, foundation when it comes to introducing people to the genre country rap. Um, shout out to Colt Ford and everybody over there working hard at Average Joe. Sarah Ross, she is from Hamilton, New Jersey. I had never heard oh. of Ham Hamilton, New Jersey. So she's an East Coast girl, which shocked me. She's an East Coast girl, but I really, really like Sarah Ross, and I'm trying to, Sarah Ross had hit me with a little message, and um, she informed me that Ham Oh, you talked to Sarah Ross, bro? Yes, sir. Hamilton, New Damn. Jersey is the blueberry me. Hamilton, New Jersey is the blueberry capital of the world. Mm. They so know that. She grew up in Hamilton, New Jersey on a horse farm, about 20 minutes from Atlantic City, 45 minutes from Philly, but now she resides in Nashville. She's been there since 2014. Hmm. All right, now let's talk a little bit about her releases. Um, she just she released a joint earlier this year called Chopping Axe with Shelby K. Right. She has a joint <clears> called <throat> Dirty Minded, um, which I really, really like. And she has a brand new joint coming out um, called Last One. She wanted me to let y'all know it's produced by DJ KO. And she'll be letting y'all know really, really soon the release date. So please, please follow her on social media and when she go live. But Sarah Ross, when it comes to plays, um, she's at 40K a month when it comes to Spotify listens <clears throat> and 24K Instagram followers. So she is definitely climbing the chart when it comes to notoriety. Now, this is, this is where I'm going to jump in and throw my... It ain't throwing shade, but <clears throat> you know, we try to do this just so we can add some sort of structure to the whole genre. Uh, we bring in a journalistic point of view and trying to get everything in line with how we're, how it's supposed to be acting. I mean, there's some other people that are doing journalistic stuff that aren't acting accordingly, but that's them. Let them handle that. But <clears throat> I'm mad at Average Joe 
because Sarah Ross predates most of these people on our list. Maybe not Stormy. They're probably neck and neck, though. Sarah Ross, if she were more active, then there would not have been an opportunity for anybody else to come in and take the queen throne. But because she wasn't, and, I, and I'm giving all of that to the label. Now, some of that might go to the artists, because these are women, and women get pregnant, and women have to take time off. Uh, men kind of don't. Um, but I think had they kept her active as much as she could have been, she could have been the superstar of this genre. She could be what up church is for the male side. She would have been that on the female side. That's just my personal opinion for her. Okay. All right. And I, and I agree with that. Um, especially when we talk about Sarah Ross and Stormy Lee, two people were definitely active before any of these ladies were and their name yeah. should be mentioned in <clears throat> church. Calhoun. Um, actually, well, when, when you talk to them, did they did they say that they weren't getting a fair share? Or I did they say that you know? They, I'm gonna be honest. Everyone I talk to, I ask the same two questions: Where are you from? Okay. I let them know that we were doing a piece on them. I, well, I let them know okay. who I was. Country rap report. I let them know <laughs> that we were gonna do a blog on females in country rap, and I just wanted to know where they were from and what they was working on currently. Um, and okay. then I, I left the door open because eventually um, I want us to start bringing these people of the genre with us because we bring an expertise, but in having conversations with these, these people, we'll be able to allow them to see the expertise <clears throat> as, well as people who watch our blogs. So I just want to know what they were working on and where they were from and introduce our platform to them. Okay, so well, opinion aside, let's just what why do you think like there hasn't been a dominant female in the genre? I know the genre is like random as shit and ain't no structure. That's still to this day. But since it began all the way up until now, there really hasn't ever been a dominant female until a recent memory. Like why why do you think it just hasn't been? You think that they just what I know the hip hop doesn't take the whole genre series, but why from within the genre? There hasn't been that girl, that queen. Like, why do you? Why, what's your opinion? Let me tell you what I want you to do. I want you to hold okay. that question. Remember that question, because okay. I was okay. actually going to, in my closing, I was going to address that. Okay, cool. All right, that's cool. Because I All do right. have an I do have an opinion on that. I do have an opinion on that, and that was going to be in my summary once I finished. Okay, cool. All right. So, third on the list. Third on the list, and she probably made third. Like I said, the list is no order. I kind of went by popularity and people that I knew of. So she okay. is third on my list. Um, and hopefully a future <laughs> guest on the show. Hopefully all these ladies are future guests on the show. But third on my list is Miss Shelby K. Shelby K reigns from St. Matthews, South Carolina. Never heard of St. Matthews, South Carolina. Right mm -hmm. now, Shelby K has a buzz. She doesn't have a huge buzz, but Shelby K got people talking, whether it's positive or negative. Shelby K um, just released a record. We actually just done a blog on her record called Cookies Crumble, and it's a diss track. Mm -hmm. And in that diss yeah. track, she never mentions any names, but she's grabbing somebody by the throat. She's also featured on the um, record Shopping Axe, which is a very, very dope record, kind of a party record with... Um, Miss Sarah Ross. So um, if you don't like Shelby K for her joint um, Cookies Crumble, because I know you fans play favorites, check out Chopping Axe. Um, like I said, it's a, it's a dope, a dope, um, a dope party record. They talk about dropping it low, and I like that record. But Shelby K also has got some new stuff coming out. Um, Actually, she's got a new record coming out in 10 days. Well, I shouldn't date it. On February 26th, she has a brand new record coming out called Thick and Pretty for all my thick and pretty big girls out there. And um, we're going to be bringing her on the show to talk about Cookies Crumble, Thick and Pretty, and her journey in country rap. Now, to me, I like Shelby K. Uh, Shelby K is thick and pretty. Um, I yes. don't see her doing anything cosmetic to herself. And Shelby K is country rap. Now, like I said, Doris Ann might be my poster child, but Shelby K would definitely be 
And you know why? Because Shelby K can kill a buck, skin that <laughs> bitch, and cook that bitch. Okay, I, I respect that. I respect that. And one time for Shelby K, because Shelby K is the first rapper I've ever seen in my history of covering rap. Because to me, this is just rap. She's the first person I've seen to rock duck boots in a video, goddammit. <laughs> oh, that's what, okay, she, she gets on the wall of fame for that. You remember duck boots? I like, I, I, I do, I do, I do. I, I like, I like Shelby. She's got a really good, from, from what we're seeing, uh, and we'll know more whenever she, we can talk to her. I really want to talk to her and I want to talk to Sarah Ross. Um, but, Shelby's the, the, she's the it factor right now. <clears throat> and I want to see what her line of thinking is. Like, what, what makes her do this? What makes her do that? But her vibe is, all of these, most of these girls are, I got this down home every day. I'm just your chick neck door vibe. You know, they're not over the top with the theatrics. It's, they're not coming at you with all the ego. Like, I'm, I'm better than you and I don't even, you shouldn't be in the room with me. You should be paying me to talk to you. Like you, we get that a lot in rap, rap. Uh, but most of these chicks, from the the personality that I'm seeing, and that they're portraying on social media, uh, they seem pretty homely. I, and I like that. I like Shelby. She's real pretty. I, I like uh, Shelby. I, but, I like Shelby too. And um, hey man, so, I'm I'm with anybody bringing it in for the BBWs. And Shelby K. Is for sure. She's definitely been a representative for the BBWs. Yeah, we're not, ain't nobody shaming around here. It's all about representing who you are and loving it and just putting it out there. Leave them plastic surgeons alone. Let them operate on the rich mm. people. Why you, why you? Uh, no comment. I'm going to leave that alone, fam. All right. Now, Wait, this, listen. <laughs> this, now, this is what shocked me, and I'm kind of pissed. When I went on Spotify and I looked at Shelby K numbers, She's only at 5K monthly listeners. What the hell is wrong with you people? Why are y'all not? Well, again, she ain't, she ain't been that active. Like, the, the, the issue with saying, and the numbers that we're talking about in the, the top two, they're consistent. They've been consistent over some months, so they're able to say that these numbers are where they are. She hasn't been that consistent. And, that, again, that, that might be label problem. I don't know. I don't, but I can't, we can only speculate. It frustrates the shit out of me because there is no structure here and we can't really dig into why things are going on and everything that I'm looking at, I'm having to analyze with the numbers and trying to pull pull out why this is moving this way and that's moving that way, but it doesn't hold true because there's nothing has structure in this shit. So it, I, I'm, that's just my ramble on that. But we, we go ahead and can finish the whole countdown. And and lastly, she was at um, 3K when it comes to Instagram followers at the time of, of, of this this blog. Oh, she should be more than that. Yes. Her Instagram be popping. She's real pretty. Yes. Um, and I'm going to say this. She's definitely, since the district, well, since Chopping Axe, she's been way more active. Um, you know, I don't know. She's definitely got the battery in her back right now. Um, unfortunately, Good. and I'm going to say this, unfortunately, fans are fans. And fans, when people are fans, they're not objective. And um, it's, it, it appears to me that people can do one thing to one person, but then if another person does it to them, then the fans are upset. And I think on a lower level, on a lower tier. Which fans? We talking I'm, about these. I'm, 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 country rap fans. Yeah, country rap fans. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, I think on a lower tier, she's gotten some backlash for her disc record, and she never even mentioned any names. But when I do go to her Instagram, I see people getting at her about the record, and I'm like, man, come on, fam. Come on. Y'all mad at her? Y'all mad at her, and she ain't even calling her by name. Y'all stop playing. This is, this is the, the culture has to learn itself, too, Vic, though. Like, they, we were just having this conversation. They don't, they don't understand that dissing is just as much as hip-hop, as dancing, as DJing, as the fashion. Like, they don't, they don't, they don't understand. I, I can't say they don't understand it. They aren't, they aren't being respectful of what true hip hop is and how country rap is taking those influences from true hip hop and brought it over to their culture. So if they're not understanding that it's okay to diss. Dissing is normal. Dissing is natural. 
somebody saying that they're the best, and then the next dude talking about they're the best, and the next dude talking about that. We can't all be the best. But everybody's going to say that they're the best, and eventually somebody's going to be like, well, you know, you ain't the best, and this is why. So then the diss pops out. It's normal. It's healthy. It's where it becomes unhealthy is when they take the shit off of the record, and then now they're shooting at each other. But I don't think we're at that point. I, I, I'm just glad right now that they're, it's, it's a healthy culture to where people are expressing themselves and saying that they don't like X a person or X crew. That's fine. You ain't got to agree with them. Put it all on wax. All right. We're going to keep it moving. This is where, all right. like I said, this list is in no order. But if it was an order, my order was by numbers. And the numbers right. I used was Instagram and Spotify. Instagram, Spotify. Okay. And people say, again, this is not Spank and Vic XL or Pino who's best or who's worse. We just want to recognize those grinding in the genre as females. But I did try to bring some structure with numbers. Gotcha. Next up, fresh off the success of her brand new album, Savages, representing Deltona, Florida, is Miss Savannah Dexter. Okay. The fan proclaimed Queen of the South. I'm gonna say fan proclaimed because I've never heard her say it. So the she fan said it, fam. She has said it. Oh well, the South the whole camp. <laughs> whole camp has said it. Okay. <laughs> the self proclaimed Queen of the South, Miss Savannah Dexter. She's from Deltona, yeah. Florida. Um Y'all know, if you don't know, she just dropped her album uh, February the 5th called Savages. Um, it's doing extremely well. I'm not sure where it tapped out at on the charts for her first week, uh, Savages, but it's definitely a solid project. Uh, she's got, man, well over 6 million combined views on YouTube, um, Raising Hell, um, Throw Another Stone, uh, Video upon video upon big trucks. She's got videos. She's everywhere. I think she's got the Fashion Nova deal. Uh, she's definitely taking country rap female to that next level, especially if you think commercialism. Yes. Yeah. Spotify. She sits at 97K Spotify listeners a month. 78k Instagram followers. Like I say, I didn't check no Facebook groups. I didn't check subscribers on YouTube. I just stuck with Spotify, Instagram. If not, this blog would be three hours. 97k monthly listeners on Spotify. 78k Instagram followers. Um, this is the one thing I like about Savannah Dexter and bringing this thing to the forefront. This girl outworks most you guys. Yes. Period. Yes. I've seen Savannah Dexter do something I have not seen, and I'm sure it's done because I don't see every damn thing. But I've seen Savannah Dexter do something the week of her release that I personally have not seen. Savannah Dexter at 8 p.m. This is three days out from the fifth. So say the second, third, say the first, second, and third, no, second, third, and fourth. And I might be wrong on the day. Well, I'm right on the days, but the platform. On the second, 8 p.m., she went Facebook Live to talk about her project being released in three days. Okay. On the third, at 8 p.m., she went YouTube Live to talk about the release of her project on the fifth. On the fourth, at 8 p.m., she went Instagram Live to talk about her release. That lady, love her, hate her, is reaching out, touching her people. She's showing her appreciation for your time. She's showing her appreciation for you clicking like. She's showing your, her appreciation for you buying her merch. She is showing her appreciation, and she is using these free platforms to garner the success that she's garnered in the past 12 months. So even though I mentioned her second, and it's going to be people who are going to be mad because I mentioned her second, and again, this has nothing to do with skill set, or our opinion, it just has something to do with the numbers on Spotify and Instagram. Savannah okay. Dexter is the face, in my opinion, via the numbers of female country rap. 
Can't disagree. Now, you might say, how can she be the face of female country rap? But you didn't mention her first. I'm going to tell you why in a few seconds. But we reviewed her project. We both agreed it was a solid project. You know, you felt like you could have some tweaking. I felt like she couldn't have had a... I feel like it's an untapped ceiling for her. I feel like it's only up for her. And that's in a good way. Agreed. I think right now, Agreed. if all eyes are not on her, when I'm talking about all eyes, major labels, uh, branding, um, if they're not, then those people are not doing their jobs because she is making you take notice of the genre from a female perspective. She hadn't had any missteps yet. And I've, 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 been, I've been watching. Her, her only quote unquote issue probably would be like a stylist or something like that. But other than that, She's been, her, the, the, the music has been thrown out perfectly. The the PR behind it has been thrown out perfectly. The PR in front of it has been perfect. Like it's, there's no, there's nothing negative you can say about her career other than how it got started. But where she is right now, you can't, you can't dispute it. She is the face for country rap. She might even be up there with uh, Upchurch as in popularity. Yeah. Like if those two ever decided to do a, a concert or a tour, or a that joint, would be awesome. Or a joint project. Joint project will be dope as shit too. Hell yeah, because they they are the they are like you said the the epitome of what country rap is currently. Anybody that says anything otherwise, they lie. They they, they, they lie. hate. They're they're hating and they're just a fan of somebody else. Right, and I, that's being biased, and I'm I'm not biased. <clears throat> and neither are you. I mean, it's, it's all journalistic input. All right. All right, coming in on the list, the last name we're going to talk about before we get up out of here is Miss Katie Noel, representing Asheville, North Carolina. All right. To me, Katie Noel is the queen of the big truck. Uh, Katie Noel definitely <laughs> loves the ladies, and she definitely loves trucks. All right, I'm sorry. She doesn't love the ladies. She loves a lady. And she loves trucks. And I don't mean that in no negative way at all. So don't nobody take that. Oh, away. they coming for your ass out no. this one. <laughs> she, 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 she's in love with Autumn. One time her and Autumn makes a beautiful couple. Um, they just right. recently got engaged. Um, I like the fact that Katie is letting her, letting us in her, her life. She's letting us in her life. Now I'm gonna talk a little bit about that. Um, Katie um released a project last quarter, like December, November, called I can't really pronounce it. I guess it's called Noel 33. She used mm -hmm. uh, Noel 33. I'm not sure what 33 means. This is why she's mentioned last and considered number one on our list right now. Katie Noel, while y'all get mad at her, y'all mad at her, y'all hating on her. <laughs> right now, Katie Noel is sitting at 400,000 Spotify listeners a month. That's four times as much as Savannah. Yes. So y'all can be mad all you want, but y'all goddamn ain't listening. Can, <laughs> somebody, somebody listening though. <laughs> no, no. What I'm saying is because I'm sure every Savannah fan who watches this is gonna be mad and say we don't know what we're talking about. Y'all just mad and y'all just typing. Y'all need to goddamn start listening on Spotify. Or maybe y'all listen on iTunes. I don't know. I'm a Spotify guy. On on Spotify, Katie Noel got that thing in a stranglehold. 400 k right. listens a month. I know hip hop artists who would die for those numbers. Oh uh, yeah, without a doubt. Instagram, two hundred and sixty-five k Instagram followers. That is oh damn, triple, I didn't know that. That is triple the number of Miss Dexter, and I'm not comparing the two because I like them both. Matter of fact, I'm gonna say this: Katie Noel, girl, I love you. But your ass almost did not make this list. Because, yeah. because on your you project, <laughs> on your project, yeah. On your project, I listened, I listened, I listened three times, and I did not hear not one bar from you. Yeah, you were trying to find it. Try it real hard. And I'm gonna be honest, Katie, and I love you, and I like your music, and I and I, I wish you the best. I almost wouldn't have known you were a rapper if Savannah Dexter did not diss you. Because Savannah's Raising Hell made me go back and listen to Katie. And by the time Katie got with church, I think she has abandoned 
the rap. And I think Katie don't give a damn that she's on our list. And she don't give a damn that she won't be on it next year. Because look at her numbers. She's like, screw you. Screw you, big and screw you, Spank. Because I'm a country artist now. And that's okay. <clears throat> but because initially she was a country rap artist from a female perspective, um, she made the list by the numbers. I like Katie. I think she's going in a different direction now. Now, let me say this. Mm. Okay. Did you want to add anything on Katie? Because I'm finna summarize. Um, I think Katie should not come back to country rap. Like, I, she probably don't need to make the list next time. And that's, that's where she is. She's in her own little pocket. She ain't worried about none of this other stuff. She made the list really out of... Um, she wasn't an accessory. She was a she. Could, she wasn't an afterthought. Like what? What would she be? Where we had to mention her just because she was in it, but she really ain't in it. That's what she was. All right, look. Like really, she should have been like an honorable mention, and then so Savannah would have been at the top of that list. To be honest, because she hadn't rapped in a very long time. Yeah. Um. And and she has stated publicly, if I'm not mistaken, that she thinks it's a it's a dead genre. And she ain't even trying to come over here. So if she's here now, this is just an honorable mention just because of the numbers that you have and your influence in country rap as a female. Because all of the other females on here would definitely have to respect what you've done prior to. But going forward, unless she starts rapping again, I doubt she would be back on anybody's list as a favorite for country rap. But she definitely deserves to be on the country list, though. Okay. All right. So now... My summary. All right, you asked the question about the exposure. Um, yes. So, this is my question moving forward for all you ladies. So, anyone who and, and 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 why and why there hasn't been anybody consistently. That was my main part of it. Like cause these, I almost called them bitches. That's just me and my my hoodness. I apologize. These ladies have been doing this far back as, and I'm looking at my list, 2014-ish. So for six years, seven years, they've been doing it. But up until 2020, country rep as a female has not been at the forefront. That's even considering what Katie Noel did prior to her and church having a relationship or whatever you want to call whatever that was. But it still wasn't a forefront thing. Like why, why has that not happened? There's always, in rap, there's always one female. Always. Like, in, in every year, they pick one. It's, it's, it's standard. Like, by March, April-ish, you're going to know who that one is because the media is pushing her out. All of the blogs are talking about her heavily. The labels are put this budget behind her. She's that one for that year. We don't know who the hell it is for country rap because the, the whole genre isn't structured so far. Savannah has taken that lead and taken the crown, quote unquote, from Katie, because she was the talk of the town and everybody was talking about her. And then Savannah did what she did and how she came out. And now she's the talk above what Katie is. Even though Katie has more numbers, Savannah still has more PR. And I don't know why Stormy Lee hasn't done this. I don't know why Sarah Ross didn't come out, kicked the door down and stayed relevant. And she became the Taylor Swift of the Taylor Swift version of country rap. I, I don't know why. And I would like to know why and why these ladies have not been as consistent as I would like for them to be. As we can see, Savannah has been and proven it. And she did it with fucking singles from July to January. It can be done. So what, why has it not been done prior to that? All right, I'm going to say, number one, when I listen to all these ladies, when I listen to all these ladies, This is not a bad thing. Okay. I, in, in those 10 ladies, when I listen to them, only two to me appear to be committed to the rap. Out of that list of 10, only two to me appear to be committed to the rap. And that would okay. be Shelby K and Jane Wick. Um, okay. So, I think, and I, and I don't know any of these ladies. Hopefully, we will interview all 10 of these ladies. That's my goal. At some point in time, I'm shooting for this to be 
your platform for country rap, country rap opinion, and the words of the country rapper. That way, I plan on everybody. If K Noel got a problem, I want to talk about it here. I, I plan on this being the platform for you to talk about it. But as I see, I think every one of these ladies want to be country rap singers. And maybe I'm wrong. If they can quote me, um, if you're an aspiring country rap female, let me know. But I don't see any of the females that are committed to the rap other than Shelby K. And, and maybe Jane. Is that, is, that a, is that a bad thing? No, no, no. I'm saying it's hard to push somebody to the forefront and build a genre if no one's committed to it. When you got okay, artists, well, when you got artists like Shelby Case basically saying she feel like the genre is not going anywhere, you shitting me. All y'all create this genre was created based off of hip hop that has basically taken over music in general. If it wasn't a hip hop, there wouldn't be a country rap because everyone that's in country rap is a fan of hip hop. You're lying if you say you're not. You're lying if you say you're not. If not, when the hell did you learn how to rap? Where did you even know that it was such a thing? So everyone in country rap is a baby of hip hop. Period. Your offspring. Okay. Now. Okay. Secondly, it's not being pushed to the forefront because other than average Joe, there are no machines. There are no machines. So I don't see average Joe's machine, fam. No, no, no. This is random. They're the closest to you want some no disrespect to average Joe. They have they have they have the cap capabilities to be a machine, but it ain't running like a machine. I'm gonna be honest, and 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 maybe we should do a piece on average Joe. There are artists no, okay. on average Joe who have a label that's doing better than average Joe at the current time. They start out there on average Joe as artists, but they have a label that to me that are pushing more numbers and pushing artists that have more numbers than they have on average Joe. Like so the, average like, Joe would be cash money, and then that artist would be young money. Hey, average Joe has the lax. The lax has a label. I, I don't know the name. We'll talk about, we'll do a piece on that label. But they have Hard okay. Target. They have um, West Nile. They have, they have like four or five artists over there. They've even created a super group called Racket County. And those, those artists' individual numbers, other than the lax who are on the Mount Rushmore of country rap. Right. Their artists have more numbers than the artists on Average Joe. Now, this is the thing for me. The reason, but Average Joe is the closest thing to a machine because they were first. They were first. That don't make you the better. No, no, no. They were first. They were first. So well, well, you get you get the stamp for being first, but that don't make you the best one, though. Right now, Mako is, is probably better I, than all of them. That's all about every... Okay. Mako and Savannah Dexter are winning, number one. She has good, good product. You cannot win without good product. Consistent product. She, Bruh, Mako is one for one. Yes. They're first artist up there, and now she's the talk of the entire genre. And guess what? Like, and then... You can't, you can't, they've tried and tried and tried, probably been doing it longer than, what, two decades now? Like, shit. And there's still no structure, and it's, we probably need to talk to somebody over at Average Joe on one of these um, podcasts, because yes. I, mean, I, I, I want to know why. We're going to keep it, because that's a whole other podcast we're going to talk about. Yeah, uh, for sure, for sure, for sure. We're getting sidetracked. Uh, my bad, my bad. Savannah Dexter <laughs> is winning, and I'm going to keep it female, because she has the closest thing to a machine that understands marketing on a grassroots level to the consumer. Even though we okay. want to think it's different, even though we want to say it looks different and it sounds different, the marketing is the same. Savannah Dexter is winning because her team came from a hip hop background and they know how to market to a hip hop consumer even if the consumer isn't the consumer of hip hop their mind frame is still the same when it comes to consumption of the music that's why she was able to enter the game and choke hold it out off a of this record i can't disagree with none of that all of that is true 
They said, fuck the, fuck the, pla fuck the camo, fuck the plants. We're going to make you pretty. Not saying she wasn't pretty. Mm. We're going to put pictures up of you in bathing suit bottoms. All these country women wear bathing suit bottoms, but how many were putting pictures up like that? So we're going to appeal to the sexism in this thing. They appealed to everything that creates a fan. Because do you think um you think I'm looking at I'm you think Samantha's gonna get pushed back because she's pretty? No, no, no. I think the fact that she's pretty helped her. Look at look. But you think these Okay, let me say Do you think these the other people that's on the list that might be dissing them is gonna be a little tight because she's has a better image. That's the that's the PC as well as I can say it, that. It, it's it's just it's just like in hip hop. There are gonna be women that talk about they whack. And there are gonna be women who think that's dumb. It's all opinionated business. It's a matter of okay. how how you want to win. All right, let's let's we, we're gonna keep it female. Let's okay. look at Cardi B and what Cardi B talks about. Oh my God, let's not. Okay. I'd rather not. Okay, but now let's look at an artist like a Missy Elliott and what she talked about. Okay. okay? Number-wise, who is the most successful artist? Uh, now, Cardi B. Okay. Talent-wise, who is the most successful, who is the, the better artist? Oh, Missy Elliott, without a doubt. Right, but because Missy didn't do no surgery, she, she, hey, she was pretty and thick, shouts out to Shelby K., she kept right. it true. She kept it true to what it is, but no matter what you call it, hip hop or country rap, the sexism will always sell. I'm sorry, I don't agree. I don't like it, but Savannah Dexter's marketing team know that, and that's what, bro. On the week she dropped her album, I did not understand this picture to save my life. She has a picture of herself <laughs> standing in the bathroom with a sweater on. And a bathing suit bottle. I can look mm -hmm. at all the women we named, and I would not find a picture like that. Whether it's good, bad, or indifferent, I'm not shaming the picture. There's nothing wrong with the picture. I'm saying the level of marketing and targeting the people that you want to listen and click like. So is she winning because of sexism? She's winning because of it all. Sexism. She's working harder, she's grinding harder, she's making better music, she's got a better team right now, and this is no... Okay, well, hold, on, hold on, hold on, hold on, well, let's, let's pull back. If she wasn't pretty, would we be talking about Samantha Day? If she didn't have them yams and was and showing them in her pictures, would we really be talking about Samantha Day? We'll be talking about Savannah like we talk about these other nine artists. Since he just be in the whole pile with the other one, other other ones, she wouldn't yeah. have anything to stand out. Yes. I think that would that puts a target on her. And I don't. I, I've been around Savannah. I, I think she has the personality to win, and I, she has the attitude to make it in the industry. I don't know if she has the thick skin to deal with what's next, because when you take that crown, all the other bitches is coming after it, and it's gonna be something that's gonna be prettier than her gonna be something that's gonna be finer than her they're gonna have better writers they're gonna have better production she needs to get ready for what is next because this list is that we just put together is going to grow through 2021 because of what stormy has done and what sarah ross has done and what katie has done and what she has now done and put into the forefront there is a crop ton of white female rappers that are getting ready to get their shit together for 2021 and come out. And she's going to be prime target. She ain't make no, no, and Gator has to know this. All right. Gator, Gator being the, the rapper that he know that he is, he has to know that every bitch that's been a rapper is going to come out to Savannah because she's the queen right now. I want to ask this question. Yeah. And there is a person who won big and done Savannah Dexter before Savannah Dexter minus the disc record and she won tremendously but Who that? because the cultures are different she was she stumbled up when it came to media training where on this side media training isn't necessary because 
Right. She, she start, no, what I, and what I mean, that's not a diss. What I mean is this female won number wise in the hip hop culture. But once she started getting in front of hip hop journalists, she didn't have the media training to sustain. Who are you talking about? Iggy Azalea. Oh my God. She should not even open her mouth in front of a camera. But number wise, visibility. And the, and, and, and the comparisons are fucking crazy from the what happens behind the scenes with music creation to the look to the appeal like that Savannah all day. All day. Now, only thing if you parallel their careers, Iggy just right. didn't have a disc record. And there was no way that Iggy was gonna have a disc record in the hip hop side of thing because she would have been she would have got destroyed because she absolutely been, yes. So <laughs> she but she made good records, like Savannah made good records. Right. She blended a little classism and sexism, like Savannah, because it ain't no Nicki Minaj, uh, Cardi B pictures with your with your poo poo hanging. Right, right, it's, right, right. It's right. just enough to make the men like, God damn. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> just enough. Perfect example. Just Perfect enough. Example. She started. Her body started changing, missing her career for the better. What whether they was going to Doctor Miami or not, I don't know. I'm not saying. Right. I'm, just, I'm just saying. <laughs> oh. God bless you, Dr. Miami. God bless you. Um, but the careers, if Iggy Isaiah had done country rap, she would have been Savannah Dexter. And she'd still be winning. Oh, yeah. So, which, was, which is probably the funny part because the person that would be able to beat Savannah right now would have to look like Iggy Isaiah. If Iggy Isaiah, Whoever that is out there. If, now, I don't think Iggy, Iggy Isaiah could switch lanes and win. Because she's she's tainted now, like she's damaged good. Oh yeah, for sure. But first of all, she's British, isn't she? From or Australian or whatever. It don't matter. Like she's she ain't even from over here. She's still see Iggy Azalea now is the complete hip hop one on one kit. She done had a baby by the hottest rapper in the game, and he's gone. So she's got she's got her hip hop t shirt and everything. And <laughs> <laughs> oh, the hip hop delegation went out like the return Iggy <laughs> Pick your baby up on the way. Welcome to single mothers. <laughs> I'm not laughing at oh, okay. single mothers. I'm just saying she went and done. Right. She had a baby by a rapper. Like God damn girl, I thought you was trying to come back. Right, so, right, right. But um, but she had the perfect marketing team, and Savannah has the perfect team around her now. And I know they know, but it don't even matter who's coming. It doesn't matter who's coming because. They were so smart and they were so successful in building her fan base. Her fan base is like Beyonce's fan base. Like Nicki Minaj. Yeah, the Beehive. Bro, yeah. the Beehive or or whatever Nicki's Savannah fan base will ride on Nikki's your got, back. Um, Nicki got Barbie. Yeah. Yeah, they will. And they come in in swarms. So it don't matter. It don't matter. She's not um Gator ain't gotta be ready. Savannah don't ever have to diss anyone ever again because her fans are coming for your neck the way they came out the cookies crumble. So mm. they built it. They built it and then they created, made it genuine. And through the genuine, they got <laughs> loyalty and they're winning. The only thing Savannah can do now is disrespect the culture and that will make her lose. Other than that, she locked in. Well, I think she's more of a. I think she's defining the culture because you didn't see a lot of none of these other girls wear J's. If they did, they would not take yeah. pictures with the motherfucker. Yeah. You know, Savannah is, is doing it and then she's doing it visibly. So if she, she is definitely, I think in a year from now, we'll probably be having this whole nother conversation and we will, we might even be talking about Savannah being as popular, if not more popular than Upchurch. All yeah. she has to do is continue to put music out. This is my last thing, and I'm going to close it down. Okay. Like I said, I don't think any of these women are committed to the rap. I really... Oh, I oh, oh one more thing for you. Hold on before you close it, close it. I need you to look somebody up, though, after we get done. Um, chick named Baby Mac. I don't know if you remember her. She was a white rapper. She was in this lane, country outfits, 
country, everything. This is fucking 2012-ish. I did it when I was researching all this other stuff, but long story short, she came out in 2012, put some records out. She became a DJ. And now she's a DJ for ESPN College Game Day. Um, but the records that she did put out, it was all in the lane of country rap. Now, I, I don't know what happened. Maybe she had a baby. Maybe she got away from the whole sport and just didn't want to deal with it no more and was more comfortable doing DJing. I don't know. I couldn't dig, dig into it too much. I just found the stuff, did a little bit of website digging. Most of her sites are down or gone, or disappeared, but the music is still up. I think if had she stayed in it, you know, she would probably be 10, 15 years in the music industry and might be who we were talking about, the queen of this genre. But I, I when you look her up, we can have this as a sidebar after this whole podcast is over with, but she is what a lot of these girls are trying to be today. Uh, and had, she had the look, she had the lyrics, she had the marketing, she had the branding, all of that stuff. Uh, I don't, and I don't even know if any of these girls in this top 10 would, not top 10, in this list of 10 would even know who she is because she predated all of them. Uh, I, that I, matter of fact, I, w- I would probably reach out to her just to get an interview, just to see where she is and why she started out and stopped. Because okay. um, I'm curious about all that. But oh wait, go ahead and you go ahead and finish. I apologize. No, I just want to see. Um, I want the genre to live within, just like with females in hip hop. I want the genre to live. I want as many women to to thrive. Um, like I say, I think most of these women have aspirations of being country singers, and this maybe was an end for them. Um, I just want I'm not gonna I'm not gonna listen to that. Huh? I mean, I'm I'm just gonna be transparent as possible. I'm not listening to country. I listen to the country rap, but I, I the singing turns me off. I can't do it. And I can't if if they want to keep me as a fan, I need to hear bars. Yeah, I agree with that. Um, so I just want to see the women more women commit to it. I want to hear more bars, and I don't even care if you rap about being sexy, cute, your truck, skin in a buck. Um, I want the genre to thrive. I want the genre to thrive and live. So one time for all these ladies right. on the grind, hopefully next year we'll have a whole new list. Hopefully, maybe in six yes. months. Maybe in six months yes. we'll do a, 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 a part two. Do a recap. Yeah, of some sure. women who done came along. Um, I yes. just want to see these ladies stay committed to it. And I encourage all the business people, because all these women are independent. So it's all trial and error, other than the, the um two that's on average Joe. Um and Mako, which Mako is still independent. I just, in right. building your team, make sure your team is researching what to do to help you build organic fans and listeners. That's, that's it. Stay true to it. Do it. Work your ass off in all your spare time and, and build genuine fans and don't get pregnant. Absolutely don't get pregnant. That's one of the top five rules. Do not get pregnant. And You're finna be off for six months if you do. Matter of fact, all you ladies, and this is a shameless plug, I'm not even really, um, y'all holler at Fashion Nova or holler at um, SAF Clothing. I need to see more women in country rap with endorsements. Because it seems like mm. right now the only people in country rap, they endorse liquor, liquor, liquor. It's, it's definitely, an alcohol, it seems like it's, if you're an alcoholic, you can win. <laughs> I, I'm... I, I, I embrace their independence. I, I hope there's a shit ton more, especially now that Savannah's kicked the door down and she's loud and she's pretty much the poster, poster girl for the genre. Like, bring, bring them on. Bring all of them out. I want to hear it. All right. That's it for me. That's it for me, too, fam. All right. It's your boy Vic XL for my guy Spank. We are the Country Rap Report. Y'all, again, do me a favor. Hit that subscribe button. Hit that like button. Get in those comments and tell us how you feel. Tell us who should have been on the list. Tell us who's coming. Tell us our opinion ain't shit because you watched anyway. Hit that <laughs> notification button for you know we dropped, all right? Till next time, it's the Country Rap Report. Mm-hmm. Peace. Later.